Hello, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, how are you guys doing today? How are you guys doing uh, today? Uh, so everything seems to be okay. Uh, all right, so let's start the stream then. Uh, so Carrot91, thank you so much for uh, 13 months of tier 1 subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello, hello to you too. Uh, really appreciate it. So, um, on the previous stream, uh, we implemented inline function for our uh, inline functions for our programming language. You can find the source code for the programming language here uh, in the description if you're watching on YouTube. So, and uh, that actually introduced a couple of interesting problems that I would like to uh, basically address on this sort of like a follow-up stream. So today we're gonna continue working on inline functions, but we're basically gonna be fixing the bugs that were introduced by inline functions. And the most important bug that I kind of anticipated, but then during implementation, I forgot about it. It's that uh, inlining functions broke the type system of fourth, right? So uh, the interesting thing is that the type checking is happening on the intermediate representation. And inlining the body of the procedures into intermediate representation messes with the process of type checking. Right, and type checking basically stopped working uh, for uh, inlined procedures. This is actually very, very interesting. Uh, so, the extra, the genius, subscribed for four months uh, with Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome to our epic port club. Really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so, uh, let's uh, let's actually see the problem. So this is one of the problem. I suppose this is the major problem. There is another one, but we're gonna address that a little bit later once we fix the type checking one. So uh, let's go. So the main problem is uh, when you have something like pointer plus, right? So plus operation it accepts two integers, right? Plus operation accepts two integers and returns a new integer. So let's actually go to full uh, dot port and do something like this. So you can put two integers uh, onto the stack, then you can sum them up and you can print them, right? And that will work fine. Uh, so let me do something like port uh, dot pi and I'm gonna compile and run this entire thing. Uh, there we go. And as you can see, it does in fact work. It produces three. So the problem is that you cannot sum up uh, pointers which makes it not suitable for pointer arithmetic. So if I include uh, std, in std we have a um, thing called null, which is a pointer. If you try to compile this kind of thing, uh, it will uh, say that argument one of plus is expected to be type integer, but got type pointer. Right. So, but got type pointer, and as you can see, it will just uh, not work. It tells you that, and it tells you where this thing is located. Uh, okay, because of that, in a standard library of port, I created pointer plus, which sort of makes uh, a plus operation specifically for pointer arithmetics. It accepts pointer as the first argument and offset as the second one. So the first one has to be pointer, the second one has to be integer, and it returns a pointer that is offset by the offset. Right, and how it works, it basically uh, casts both of the argument, arguments internally to integer, right, and then sums them up and then casts them back into the pointer. So here we sort of explicitly say, uh, you know, uh, how to convert types and whatnot, but the actual typing is protected by, by the procedure. Okay, and because of that, uh, you have to use something like pointer plus. Right, we have to use something like pointer plus, and there we go, it works now, right, it works. Uh, print, by the way, accepts any integer, it can be uh, integer, pointer, or boolean, it doesn't really care, right. So, and uh, because of that, uh, if you try to sum up two numbers, pointer plus is not going to work, because pointer plus expects uh, a pointer, but it works. Right, if you make this thing not inlineable, if you make this thing not liable, only then it will complain, right? Only then it will complain, and it should complain. But if you make it inlineable, it will stop complaining and will just, you know, accept that. 
The reason why it accepts that is because we literally, we literally copy paste the body of this function in here. And as you can see, that body doesn't care whether something is a pointer or an integer, and it just casts both of these things to an, uh, to an integer, sum them up, and cast them back to a pointer. So it kind of erases the, um, the input argument types. Inlining erases the types, so the type checking cannot properly check anything. Uh, right, but since our uh, program uh, port.port port is correct, uh, even this sort of bug didn't really affect the compilation of the port itself. Uh, so, and this is something that I would like to address on today's stream. I think it is very, very important bug that needs to be fix. fixed. What do you guys think? Um, <clears throat> hello, hello everyone, how are you guys doing? <clears throat> Does plus work with mixed numeric types? It used to work with mixed numeric types, but uh, that requires uh, required overloading of intrinsics, which made the compiler too complicated to re-implement in itself, so I got rid of that. Now, plus only uh, works with integers, so if you want different types, you have to write these wrappers uh, that sort of adapt uh, different types to the integers and like back and forth. So we have pointer plus, pointer minus, and uh, so on and so forth that basically like cast everything. Uh, and they provide the typing via the, um, via the contracts of the prestigious. So this is how it works right now. In the future, again, it may change, but for now, to keep things simple, it's, it is like that. Mm-hmm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Mm -mm. All right, so let's continue. Let's let's try to implement something. Like, how can we even fix this problem? Right, as I already said, the problem is we're losing the contract information of the inlined procedure. Right. So one way to fix that is to actually bring it back. We may introduce uh, a new operation in the intermediate representation uh, that basically says something like uh, OP inlined. Right. So essentially each sort of token in here roughly corresponds to the uh, to the operation in the intermediate representation. Once we inline the particular procedure, before actually inlining the body, we can add inlined with, uh, with an argument, some sort of index of what procedure was inlined, right? Or maybe even address, right? So, um, and once we start type checking and we encounter inlined, the type checker knows that the next thing here uh, that was inlined is uh, a procedure, right? And it will look up the contract of the procedure uh, and then type check according to that contract and maybe skip uh, the entire inlined body of the procedure. So because of that, we kind of need two things. We need to know what uh, procedure was inlined, what procedure was inlined, and also uh, how much we have to skip, right? So, and the question is like, how much do we have to skip? That's a very good question. Um, so we can have a relative, a relative jump. Uh, essentially the amount of, yeah, the amount of instructions, right, the amount of instructions. Once the type checker in, uh, encounters inlined, uh, it will check the contracts, the current contracts, and then uh, it will jump by the offset provided by this instruction and continue. What's interesting is that that requires, yet again, instructions with two operands, and our instructions right now supports only one operand. So, I have an idea. What if we store the, uh, the size of the procedure, the amount of instructions of the procedure inside of the definition of procedure? Right. 
So, essentially, uh, when we encounter inline, we will look up the definition of procedure, we will take its contract, and there we'll find the size of the procedure as well, uh, and that will be sufficient enough for us to implement the entire thing. Uh, so I think that's that's a good idea. Uh, you, Seton, uh, resubscribed with uh, Tier 1 subscription for three months. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate that, and welcome to our Epic Porth Club. <clears throat> Does anyone have any questions about what I just explained? Does the problem uh, look clear, sound clear? Mm. Is it possible to type check before inlining as if it were normal proc then inline afterwards? Uh, sure, you can probably do that, but we store all of the instructions in a linear array. In Python, right, so this will require an operation that will allow us to take an element from the array, split this array in two halves, like so, right, so we have two halves, generate a completely new array from a single instruction, and concatenate all of that back. Right. So to just inline things like this, we need to be able to do these kind of operations, which are super easy in Python. They are. Uh, but you have to keep in mind that we are aiming to implement this language in itself. So all of the features that you implement in Python version should be easy to implement in uh, port.port version. And uh, in doing this kind of stuff in port.port is rather complicated because port doesn't even have a proper malloc or anything like that. We just have static arrays. And uh, to implement that with static arrays, I need to have two arrays and constantly move elements from one array to another. It's kind of a pain in the ass. It's like easier to generate like everything once. Uh, and that's it. So that's basically the reason why I don't do it this way. Thank you. This is actually a very good question. And this is basically um, the reason why I want to get rid of the Python as soon as possible, because Python affects the decisions on how to implement things, right? So it basically nudges you to implement it things the way that is difficult to re-implement in port. You see? Right. And this is one of the examples. The majority of people don't really notice this kind of stuff, but if you try to re-implement this language in itself, you will start noticing, oh, okay, Python is using these like, uh, very sophisticated high-level features that are difficult to implement in low-level language. Well, maybe just not do that. Um, so yeah. Simpler languages force you to think about simpler solutions. Uh, with uh, com more complicated languages, you just don't notice that and you just go with a more complicated solution without even realizing that. Um, so, yeah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Couldn't you list, uh, use linked list for that? Well, linked list in 2021 are not particularly a good idea, to be fair. We can have a, like a whole lot of discussion about that, but you can Google up uh, basically something like why uh, linked lists are bad, right? And uh, you'll find a lot of different articles, a lot of different talks, primarily by Bjorn Straustrup, apparently. Uh, so I suppose he was the most vocal person about that. That explain you that in 2021, uh, considering how the modern computer works, linked lists don't really make much sense. They just don't make much sense. And right now, it's kind of like it's better not to use them at all. Maybe in the future something's gonna change. Maybe in the future something about the architecture of, of computers will change. Uh, and but right now it kind of doesn't make any sense. So and here is the like a simple explanation. They do not provide a contiguous storage guarantee, and you cannot hope to get this performance boost. And by this performance boost, they mean probably uh, you know like prefetching into the cache of the CPU, if I understand correctly. So this is primary reason why you don't want to use it, and there is a lot of other reasons. Um, so there's also purely programming reasons, uh, like, you know, managing the memory and stuff like that. <clears throat> so, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Um, happy holidays, Soding. I hope you had Merry Christmas without pseudo-random blue noise. Uh, thank you so much. We do not uh, celebrate Catholic Christmas in this Orthodox Slavic world, but uh, I really appreciate you. Uh, happy holidays anyway. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm. What are you compiling down to? I'm compiling down to assembly. 
x86-64 specifically. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. All right, so let's continue. Um, I, I'm going to presume that everything is clear from now on. Mm, okay, so uh, let's uh, go. Uh, Porth dot uh, I think I'm going to start with the uh, with the Python version, right? So let's do Porth uh, dot uh, And the first thing I want to do, I want to introduce the instruction into the intermediate representation, right? So this is a keyword. I don't care about keyword right now. I need to find the class O. Maybe it's an enumerate. No, no, no. It's a class O P type. So here are all of the instructions. Let's introduce inlined uh, auto. And I'm going to start with just running, um, trying to compile a simple program, right? So let's go back to foo.port. Uh, it's a completely scuffed program, as you can see. Uh, but I think that's fine. I can re restore it. Uh, also, I probably need to. Um, I probably need to restore the standard library, but standard library seems to be okay. Yellow Man, Yellow Man uh, five six three. Thank you so much for tier one subscription. Your first subscription, by the way. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome to our epic Port Club. So uh, now, if I try to compile this entire thing, it should tell me that I have a couple of assertions not fixed. So we definitely need to fix those. Uh, so this is. Uh, type checking. There we go. So this is literally type checking. Uh, let me see where I can stick that thing in. Uh, so this is L if op type uh, op type inlined. This entire thing is inlined. And for the inlined, uh, the operand should store the pointer to the uh, to the procedure, right? So the pointer to the procedure. But the question is. Oh boy, uh, do we have any procedures? Uh, where do we store procedures? So this is going to be false, not implemented, uh, not implemented. Uh, proc contract. Oh, okay. This is actually very good. All right. So and we have operation address, right? So operation address, and by the operation address we can find the contract. This is how we do that in. Um, in Python, but I think it's going to be relatively easy to translate to port.port as well. Uh, so, by the way, port.port already supports inline function. We implemented on the previous stream inline functions. Uh, port.port also already support them. I like implement these features in parallel. If I add something to port.py, I then re-implement it in port.port as well. So they go like, you know, uh, head to head. Is that how we say that in English? I don't know. But yeah, so they both have inline um, inline procedures, and we'll have to fix that in both of the versions. So all right, and inline should contain the uh, op address, right? So it should contain the address. So we have to do something like assert is instance of op operand uh, op address, right? And there we go. And then we should take the proc, uh, proc contracts and take the uh, the contract in here, uh, which is kind of not enough, right? Which is kind of not enough. I don't think I want to have uh, just the contracts. Yeah, I don't need. To, uh, I don't want to have just the contract. I actually want to have the procs themselves. That's what I want to have. Uh, I want to have the procs themselves. And in the program, if I take a look at the definition of the program, I only have that. So we'll have to change this thing in here. We'll have to change it. Uh, Back Piper 513, thank you so much for Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our Epic Porth Club. How about that? Uh, so let's go. Uh, I'm going to just for a brief moment remove this entire thing and run. Uh, mapi on ports.py, right? Because we have a, we're using statically typed Python. We're using statically typed Python. Mm, it's going to take some time. Okay. So and this is where we, I suppose, prepare the proc contracts. Uh, not really. So this is where we expect them. Uh, so I'm iterating through the procs, right? So this is basically the procedures. I'm iterating through the procedures. And here I have the proc address and then the proc itself, 
right so then the proc itself uh, and in here i need to extract the proc uh, ins and outs and as far as i know in the definition of the proc uh, where is the definition of the proc we have the contract yeah which okay so it's inside of the contract so i'll have to do something like proc contract ins uh, contract outs right and then the uh, this entire thing okay so the next one mm where is the next problem okay so this is where we call this entire thing and here we prepare the contracts the way we prepare them we iterate through all of the procs right and we sort of transform this uh, map right because this map is name to procedure but we need to have address to procedure right so we transform this entire map from name to procedure to address to procedure uh, and uh, i suppose this becomes a little bit like easier to work with from now on um I don't know, might as well just inline this entire thing, because why not? Um, especially, it makes especially sense when you provide not safe, right? So you don't want to pre-compute that map if you don't want to check the types, right? It makes a lot of sense for me. Um, no, the next one. Mm -hmm. So, and this is pretty much the same situation, right? It's pretty much the same situation. I'm going to just inline the entire thing. I can't see shit. Uh, in this mist, uh, but I think I can just do something like this, right? So this is going to be like that. There we go. Uh, now, if I try to recompile that or retype check rather, right? We want to retype check uh, this thing. Uh, okay. Oh, I see. So type contracts and I just... So this has to be something like procs contract. There we go. MyPy makes refactoring Python code uh, so much easier. Seriously, I really recommend. Check it out. Uh, right, it's basically type checker for, for Python. Uh, so I'm going to put it in the description. And also for everyone who's watching live, I'm going to copy paste it in here. Uh, and uh, here is going to be description. Uh, where is my description? Why did it take so much time to open description? I don't really know. Uh, so let me revert that thing. Mm -hmm. So this is my pie. My pie. Very cool thing. Uh, and now uh, I suppose I can try to run um, the compiler one more time and let's go and see. Uh, name proc is not defined. Very interesting. Okay. So I suppose it it's defined. Oh, yeah, I see. It is defined somewhere down there. Uh, let's actually go and define it maybe some way here up there so you, you, you can actually see that uh, memory is not defined uh, oh okay so now since i moved this entire thing i have to bring like everything up there uh, all right so why not i don't mind that imagine doing something like that imagine the order of the definition matter in 2021 Okay, so we have another assertion in here, and this is type checking, and oh yeah, so it got remi uh, it reminded me that I need to continue developing this thing. Okay, so uh, the operand, the operand is an address, so now I can just uh, query the uh, procedure definition like so, uh, operand, and I got the procedure that I'm type checking, right? So I get the procedure that I'm ch type checking, and essentially I can now type check everything just like a call just like a regular call uh let me show you so it's going to be uh, op yeah i think it's going to be op token we provide the context and it's okay so look at that it's literally like that yeah so you, we can even compare them the type checking of the call uh is like this and the type checking of inline is like this but uh, the call just moves to the next instruction, but in case of a line, we have to skip the inlined body. We have to skip the inlined body. Uh, and um, the only way we can skip the inlined body is, I suppose, add the body size. And as we already agreed, I think the body size is going to be contained within the procedure. So let's actually introduce something like body size. Uh, right. And because of that, it probably would make sense to maybe. Uh, you know, move this entire thing to a separate variable like this 
And that should be enough, right? That should be enough. The only thing uh, we don't have in here, we just don't have a body size, right? We never knew that we need a body size. Um, and this is something that we'll have to implement. Uh, okay, so this thing complains. This thing still kind of complains. Um, so do I want to... I think I do. I think I do. I want to just increment that and I want to try to type check ports.py uh, just to see. Okay, so proc doesn't have an attribute body size. Let's go to the definition of the proc and let's straight up introduce that thing. So this is going to be body size and it's going to be an integer. Look at that. So that will make it type check, uh, but we don't assign body size to well yeah so you have to assign it to something because it's a data class right so that means you have to provide it in here so what do we do in here we introduce a procedure but for now the body size is going to be essentially zero will it be i think i think it will yeah body size is going to be zero so we have to update that body size when we encounter the return right when we encounter the return Mm. All right, that's very interesting. Um, so let me let me see. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, so everything type checks. So let me find parse program from tokens. Here it is, and we're looking for op type return. Right. Uh huh. So this is not what we want. Uh, op type return i want to so this is the type checking mm, so i need to understand where ah yeah here it is so we encountered the word end and we realized that we're ending the procedure uh we're ending the procedure because uh we encountered prep proc right it's a prep proc Mm -hmm. Okay, here it is. So this is the end and then we have a prep proc. So, and in here, we just include the return. We just include the return. But do we do anything with the current? Okay, so we also have the current procedure, right? We also have the current procedure. Uh, interestingly enough, how can we compute the body? we already know where the procedure starts we already know where the procedure starts and we are at the end of the procedure so we can just compute the difference and assign it as the body i think that's literally what we can do i think that's pretty cool i think that is pretty cool witness thank you so much for 27 months of twitch prime's completion thank you thank you thank you and welcome back to our epic port club my god thank you thank you thank you Mm -mm. So, yesu, yesu, yesu. So, I'm gonna do assert false to do uh, assign uh, body size. Right, so this is what I'm gonna put in here. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So, is a stack based language similar to assembler? I guess. Um. Sort of, kind of. In a stack-based language, the arguments of the like basic operations like plus, minus, uh, multiply, and divide are passed via something that is called stack. In x86-64 assembly specifically, the arguments for these basic operations are passed via something that is called a register. Right, and uh, by assembler, uh, I'm not sure what you mean by assembler, because assembler depends on the architecture of the of the CPU, right? So assembler is more of a, like a human readable um, mnemonics for the instructions of the CPU and specific instructions and the semantics of these instructions depend on the architecture of the CPU. And we have different architectures, right? So x86, x86 64, ARM, MIPS, RISC V, whatever, you name it. And uh, on all of those things, the semantics are gonna be slightly different. So assembler is not like a very specific language. I would say that assembler is a, is a family of the languages, right? It's just like Lisp. There is no such language as Lisp. Seriously. Lisp as a language does not exist for more than 50 years already. It's just like non-existing language. The only language that exists though, the only languages that exist are uh, Scheme, Common Lisp, Emacs Lisp, 
uh, racket, closure, and so on and so forth. These are the languages, specific languages. By saying Lisp, we mean family of all of these languages. The same with assembly, right? There is no such language as assembly. It's more of a family, right? Uh, see what I mean? So, Valix Zero, thank you so much for 25 months of tier 1 subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome back to our epic Porth Family Club. So, some people think that Porth is a is a programming language. In fact, it's a family of programming languages. I don't know, it's probably not. Um, so, yeah. Do, 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 do. Is body size in bytes or instructions? Uh, I think it's going to be in, in instructions. Though each instruction has uh, like a fixed size, right? So, at least in the intermediate presentation. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking through the chat for maybe some interesting questions or something like that. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Mm -hmm. mm. Even, oh, this is interesting. Even the original Lisp that McCarthy made wasn't just called Lisp. Oh, that's very interesting. So, yeah, that, that even further solidifies my point. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, by the way, I have to do some pure X11 stuff right now, and your Wang tile series come so, so much in handy, so thank you a lot. Wow, I, I didn't know that it's ever going to be useful, so you're welcome. Uh, for those who doesn't know, I did like a very strange uh, series of streams on uh, Wang tiles. Uh, Wang tiles are basically like a way of generating, like procedurally generating uh, different patterns with tiles and whatnot. And I used... Um, let me find my channel. Uh, and um, I implemented pretty much everything from scratch, and for rendering I used uh, Xleap. So um, apparently it was useful for somebody, so I'm gonna leave the link in the description. So Wang Tiles, uh, so we, uh, we made like eight streams or something. Uh, all right, I'm gonna copy paste that in the chat for anyone who's interested. Uh, Wang Tiles streams, there we go. Mm -mm -mm. Cool. So uh, let's continue, I suppose. Let's continue. Um, we need to now calculate the uh, size of the body. Right, the body. Not body. <laughs> size of the body. Uh, the body. Um, so we have OP uh, prep procedure, right? And as far as I know, the proc address, the proc address points at that specific instruction, right? It points to that specific instruction. Then uh, we have a bunch of the other instructions of the body of this entire thing. And now we are here, right? We're currently here. Um, so CTX IP uh, probably pointing somewhere here, right? To figure out the size of this entire thing, right? If we just subtract this stuff, so this one is more of a zero, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Right, so here we have four instructions. We have four instructions. If I subtract five from zero, I get uh, essentially five, which is not correct, right? So I have four instructions in here. So I need to do something like minus one, and that way I'm gonna have four of them. So, and this is probably where I wanna assign this uh, thing. And I wanna do that like before here. Uh, CTX current procedure, so CTX current procedure, body size. And what I'm doing, I'm taking CTX IP. Though, uh, this thing roughly corresponds to the amount of elements in ops. So that means I probably don't have to do that. So I probably have to just do that without minus one. Yeah, I think that's fine. Uh, CTX um, current procedure, current procedure address. Right, there we go. So I think that's the way I want to do that. Mm, I think that's the way I want to do that. So let's try to uh, recheck everything. 
right? We are rechecking everything. And then uh, I'm going to try to compile it into I think. Okay, so we don't have an exhaustive handling of these instructions. Um, all right, so inlined is needed purely for type checking, right? It is needed purely for type checking. In the generation, we can just straight up ignore it, right? So if we encounter or op type, um, op type inlined, uh, we just ignore it. Inlined uh, ignored. <clears throat> it is needed purely for type checking, and it should not contribute to the actual assembly generation. You know what I mean? Uh, right. It doesn't matter. So what do we have in here? Um, return inlined. Oh boy, I have to put pass, I forgot. I forgot that in Python, you cannot just like have an empty body. Okay, so and I think I forgot to increment the assertion. All right, so this is gonna be 19. Uh, anything else? Okay, everything seems to be fine. Everything seems to be fine. And if I take a look at this thing, uh, all right. And it still compiles, by the way, right? It still compiles because I don't know why. Why does it still compile? It's not supposed to, it's not supposed to do that. <clears throat> Uh, let me, let me see, let me see. I would like to maybe print the intermediate presentation of this thing. Um, mm -mm, std port. Uh, pointer plus. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just copy paste the entire function here. So I don't have to include the std port. Right, and we're gonna just try to compile the entire thing. So as you can see, it compiles, but that will allow me to take a look at, uh, at the assembly, but I don't think assembly is gonna be particularly useful. I just wanna see the intermediate representation. Uh, how can I see the intermediate representation? I suppose I can just go to ports.py uh, and find the com function, right? So here's the com function uh, here. We parse the program, right? We successfully parsed it. And then we're just doing generation and type checking. Um, so here's the type checking. What I wanna do here is I wanna iterate through the um, operations. So op in parse context, uh, context ops. And I wanna just print each individual thing in here and then just exit with uh, zero, right? Uh, so that will just print me all of the intermediate representations, which is quite a lot, which is quite a lot, but that's fine. Uh, all right. So that's cool. Uh-huh. So it didn't even generate inlined, which means that I forgot to include the inlined instruction when we inline something. That's what I forgot to do. All right. So where do we inline everything? Um, so op type uh, call, right, op type call. Um, this is where we inline everything, right? Uh, first thing we do, we skip the prep, right? We skip the prep and we start appending the body of the function. But I think what we have to do now, we have to append a, a completely new operation, right? So we need to append a completely new operation. Class op. Uh, there we go. So the type of this operation is going to be op type inlined, right? Inlined, please. Thank you very much. Token, it was introduced by the current token and the operand, uh, operand is basically the whatever we have in the proc, right? So this is a proc. Uh, address right so this is a proc address and this is what we have in here and also that will require incrementing ctx ip but that's bes besides the point um okay so let me let me now try to compile this thing one more time and we have inlined we do have inlined would you look at that right there, there we go so that's pretty cool mm, and inlined has an address 19 which is rather strange why the address uh why the procedure address would be 19 because the the procedure starts somewhere around like zero oh i'm sorry i'm an idiot because it's it's a name of the 
uh, of the enumeration, right? It's the name of the enumeration, and the value operand is actually one, which one is the, you know, address of the procedure. Everything's fine, okay. Everything's fine is in the intermediate representation. Cool. So let me go back. So I might as well actually take a look at this thing and simply get rid of this code, right? And let's try to recompile the entire thing. Look at that. Uh, now it complains, right? Argument one of pointer plus is expected to be pointer, but got integer. Perfect. My God. So yeah, it basically acts like a proper call now. Uh, if I have some, if I cast this entire thing to a pointer, it will compile, right? And will it produce the same behavior? Uh, hopefully it does produce the same behavior. This is actually beautiful. Uh, that's actually cool. Yeah, we fixed it. So now it type checks everything properly. So essentially now we were losing the information after inlining, but we brought that type information back into, into the intermediate representation. So yeah, that's pretty cool. That is very, very cool. Mm -mm. Mm, two, 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 two. Yusu, yusu, yusu. Mm -mm. Will you ever write ports in another language like Haskell, Go, etc.? No, why? That's a weird idea. Sounds like a waste of time. Mm -mm. Why do you choose Python as the main language uh, for a joke? As I already said, I think it's a very funny joke. I implemented statically typed native compiled language in Python. And then I re-implemented that language in itself. Think about that for a second. Think about it. It generates assembly. It's a native, statically typed, low-level compiled language originally implemented in Python and then re-implemented in itself. This is hell of a funny joke. I think, in my opinion. I have a weird sense of humor, I'm sorry. But I think it's very fucking funny. Uh, so... <laughs> mm. It's like, it would be even funnier if I picked PHP. I think if I implemented port in PHP originally, I think it would be even funnier. But then I would have a really hard time because the type system of PHP is kind of like... Eh. Um, so it compiles itself. Yes, port can compile itself. I can demonstrate you. I hope I didn't break anything, so we'll see. Uh, anyway, so we have, uh, let me do something like git clean fdx to get rid of everything, right? So git clean fdx, right? Okay, so we have two things in here. Uh, we have port.port, .port, the original implementation of port, and we have port.py uh, port and port.port, .port, re implementation of port in itself. That's what we have. Cool. So now I can try to compile uh, port.port .port, uh, using port.py. So let's take, a, uh, let's take a look. So we generated assembly. Now it's using nasm. Nasm is rather slow. So it's surprisingly very slow compiler, but it actually compiled itself. Look, now we have uh, an executable called port, right? Uh, you can check it out. So it's a 64-bit um, LSB executable. And if you try to run it, uh, it basically acts like the original compiler, almost. They have like a slightly different arguments, but it's, it's pretty much the same thing. And now you can go ahead and try to compile port with itself. Right, it actually outputs slightly different things, but uh, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, right. And it will generate uh, output as the new version of the compile, uh, compiler compiled with itself. Right, you can now move output uh, into port, replacing the old version of the compiler with the new one compiled with itself. And you can try to compile it now yet again. Uh, port dot port. So I'm recompiling it again. So it's like Nazem, you can actually use a, a different com uh, different assembly to make it a little bit faster, right? We can use something like Fasm uh, Linux uh, x86 64, uh, and that would be a little bit faster. That would be a little bit faster. 
Yeah, there we go. And I can keep recompiling the compiler with itself. I just keep recompiling it and no Python script is involved in the entire chain. It is a sequence of assembly instruction, instructions that given the description of itself uh, can generate itself. There is only assembly instructions in this process involved now. We sort of bootstrapped the compiler with Python script, and now the compiler is capable of compiling itself without Python. Please tell me that this is not a funny joke. In my opinion, this is the funniest joke I've ever made in my entire life. Like, holy fucking shit. I really love it. And I really want people to appreciate this joke. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, so Chaos Driver, thank you so much for three months of Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, welcome back. Was wondering where your entertaining education content was, uh, was this week. Uh, where? It was on Twitch on and YouTube, so usually. Maybe I'm not understanding the question, but thank you so much for, for three months of Twitch Prime subscription. All right. Mm -mm. Okay. Haha, mm -mm. <laughs> fuzz. Mm -mm. No more Python. Yeah. So it, what's funny is that there is even this shit is even funnier than you think, because the native port that we have in here is slower than the Python port, <laughs> and the reason is Python port is very shady at generating proper assembly, right? It generates kind of crappy assembly instructions. And I have a couple of idea, uh, ideas on how to make it generate better assembly instructions. So port.port is going to be faster than port.py, but it's going to be like a completely separate topic. Uh, but I have a very interesting idea that might work. Um, so yeah. Anyways, so uh, let me do a committee committee and maybe even a pushy pushy. Uh, uh, let me, uh, let me find, wait a second, did I not fetch the latest changes? I think I forgot to fetch the latest changes because I had it to do for that specific problem. Mm, Porth inherited Python slowness. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm just using the wrong data structure, okay? So if that argument, argument works for the Python developers, right, so it's going to work for me. I'm just using the wrong data structure, uh, right? So, which is kind of true, but it's kind of not because there's, I'm using not only a wrong data structure, plus the, the compiler generates kind of a slow instructions. Uh, so, anyway, uh, let's, let's do the fetch. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Merge origin uh, master. Yeah, yeah. So, oh yeah, I forgot to merge the commit that actually implements the inline procedure for the port, right? So you see, so yesterday I was actually sitting re-implementing it in port and it only took like this amount of changes, so it wasn't that bad. Um, all right, so I can bring this entire, I think, back. Uh, there we go. Uh, let me see if I didn't break much stuff. Uh, so I want to just do something like port.py, compile port.port, .port, and then recompile port.port .port again with itself. Right. So you can actually do this entire process in a single in a single command line. Right. So this thing will compile port and instantly run it with the arguments, uh, and then you provide it again and run it. So yeah. You can basically compile port twice in uh, port twice with a single command line argument, and everything seems to be working, which is which is nice. I really like that. Uh, okay, so yes, 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 kawaii freaking this one. Port dot py uh, fix type checking um, for inlined procedures right fix type checking for inline procedures i'm going to push that right into the repo okay then this is only the first problem that inline procedures introduced the second problem i got reminded uh, by um, a youtube comment right uh, i was kind of thinking about that problem but yet again i forgot about this problem while i was implementing the entire thing so and this is a very interesting problem so uh, let's google up sodium daily and let's find the comment. Uh, so, all oh, right, all right, all right. Let's find it. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, 
This is a very good question. Uh, what do you guys think is gonna happen? <laughs> what do you guys think is going to happen? Has anyone tried to do that yet? Oh, so MM2PL actually tested that. The compiler hangs. All right, so yeah, it is true. So yeah, I completely missed that. Thank you so much, Oscar Dates, dates for, for reminding me. This is actually very, very cool. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and I was thinking how we can solve that. I see two ways to solve that. We can basically forbid uh, recursive uh, inline functions, which is the easiest way to do, right? Uh, essentially, when you inline a procedure, right, or maybe when you compile in the procedure and you see that the procedure calls itself, just forbid that. But I can hear you screaming at the back. I can hear you. Uh, but what about mutually recursive procedures, right? So, because you cannot detect them as easily as, you know, checking the procedure that calls itself, right? What about the mutually recursive procedure? To those people at the back screaming at me, uh, I want to ask you a question. Why did you so bravely assume that my language can even do mutual recurs <laughs> recursion? <laughs> the thing is, uh, the language is a single pass compiler, right? The, the compiler is a single pass compiler, not, not the language, the compiler, right? And uh, it doesn't have a forward declaration. So you technically can't do mutual recurs recursion in this language yet. Right. So that means, uh, for now, that solution of forbidding uh, inlining recursion, uh, recursive, uh, recursive procedures is going to be fine until we implement mutual recursion. You see what I'm talking about? Right. So mutual recursion is a concern, but not right now, because right now we don't have a mutual recursion. Right. And the reason why we don't have a mutual recursion is because you don't need it to implement the compiler in itself. Right. I never needed it. In fact, it is... You, surprisingly, you don't need a lot of things to implement compiler in itself. For instance, I don't have a negative numbers. Porth does not support negative numbers. It is not a joke and it is self-hosted. Which is kind of interesting. Like, I would never even guess that I don't need a lot of things just to make a thing self-hosted. <laughs> right. Because, like, what, what do you need the negative numbers for? Like. I don't know. So, because the compiler is just like a trans it transforms the text. You don't need negative numbers to transform the text. It's just like, yeah, you go ahead and just transform it. Uh, so, yeah, th this is the first solution, right? Just forbid the, like, um, you know, recursive inline functions. But it's kind of boring. If we think a, a little bit, we notice that we don't remove the original uh, procedure. Right. So the original inline procedure is still sitting in the code. We just use it, use it as the template to inline. Here's an interesting idea. What if when we detect that we are inside of the uh, recursive inline procedure, within that inline procedure, instead of inlining it, we call it. That way you can still compile inline procedures and they will still work. How about that? So, and essentially when you try to inline a recursive procedure, it will be inlined on one level and on the second level of call, it will just call itself. Something like that. It will still work, right? Or maybe, you, maybe we can do something even smarter. If we detect that the procedure is um, recursive and inlineable, we can uncheck the inline flag. So that's going to have like a similar effect. Uh, that's another thing we can do. <clears throat> so yeah, how about that? Um, so inlining, but we still keep the function definition. Yes. Yes, we do. In fact, even in C, when you mark a function as inline function, it does not necessarily mean that the compiler is going to get rid of the original function definition. It may keep the original function definition in case you want to take a pointer to inline procedure. Right? Imagine that you want to take a pointer to inline procedure and store it somewhere in a structure or in an array. 
how would you inline such procedure? In that case, the compiler has like two choices. When you just call to this procedure, it can inline it. But if you use it as a pointer, it will just use the version of the procedure that is not inlined, the original version. So it may actually keep both of them. And this is probably something that we're going to do as well, because I do plan to have pointers to, to the procedures as well. So you can store a pointer to the procedure and then call it later. And uh, it is on my map to implement soon. So we may keep the original inline procedure definitions in case like for that. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Sounds good. Sounds Gucci. Sounds a Tamaguchi. Um, all right. Mm -hmm. All right. So before we go ahead and fix everything, uh, let's make a small break. I'm going to refill my cup of tea and... Um, all right, let's go ahead and try to fix that problem. So I'm going to go with, oh my, I suppose, just allowing the, like, to call inline procedures. But when you try to call a recursive inline procedures, it's going to be calling just to a regular one. Uh, I think that's going to be the case, at least for now. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let me, let me try to do the following thing. So let's introduce foo.port. Uh, I already have this thing, but I suppose I need to revert that. But this file does not exist anymore. So let's create a new one. Uh, I'm going to do proc foo um, in and foo. Right. So if I try to do something like this, it's going to compile. Right. Though it's going to hang, uh, but it's still going to compile. Uh, so I'm not going to even run it because I know it's going uh, it's to hang. But we can tr uh, run it just to see what's going to happen. Uh, it exited abnormally. Oh, because it's stack overflow. I see. Uh, it basically overflowed the stack and it started to touch the like memory in the places where it's not supposed to touch it. So, you know, the usual thing. Uh, all right. So if I try to inline the entire thing, if I try to inline the entire thing and try to compile it, as you can see, it will start like consuming like more and more memory until I ran out of memory. Uh, so... <clears throat> Let's go to port.py. Okay. Mm, so, op type call. Uh, all right. Let me find that call. Uh huh. Where was. That? Okay, so that's cool. Uh, we are calling to a word. Oh, yeah, here they are. So inlining breaks the type checking, so we fix that. Uh, some sort of flag to disable inlining for debug purposes. That would be nice, but I think I'm going to actually implement that a little bit later now. I don't think it's that important. Uh, so inlining uh, does not work with recursive inline procedures. Okay. Uh, this one is rather interesting. Okay, so we are inside of the procedure or not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we are in a call. I suppose when we dis, uh, like encounter a function call, a procedure call, we have two situations. Are we inside of some sort of procedure or not inside of some sort of procedure? Right. So that's basically what we have in here. Uh, if um, current, if ctx current proc is um, none, we have to do, uh, we don't have to worry about anything. But I suppose we have to do it some way here. Uh, hmm. Oh, I have an idea. If the current procedure uh, is equal to the procedure that we're trying to call, right? That's very, uh, that's very important. And uh, that current procedure, might as well actually put it something like this. Right? So it's going to be proc. And that current procedure is in line, it is not in line anymore. Easy, GG. <laughs> that's the fix, uh, I think. Is it? I think that's a fix. <laughs> right. At least for port.py. I don't know how we're going to implement that for port.port, but yeah, it's pretty cool. So we're calling procedure. Uh, if the current procedure we're in, uh, is the procedure that we're turn, trying to call and it is inlineable, right? So in, in here we have to do something like end. Uh, it's not inlineable anymore and uh, there we go. So it's never going to be inlineable. 
so it will be inlineable only once. It's never going to be inlineable. Yeah, I think essentially, if you have a recursive inlineable procedure, it's just like not inlineable anymore. I guess it's not el eligible for inlineability. We may actually tell something to the user, but yeah. Hmm, that's actually very interesting. By the same logic, by the way, why don't we uh, allow inlining for like for procedures that contain ifs and whiles, right? If we detect those, why not just strip off inlineability, right? And just allow that thing, but also tell the user that you can't inline that thing. That's very interesting. So there's a little bit of inconsistency here, right? There's a little bit of inconsistency. So, and to reduce that inconsistency, maybe I'm going to throw an error. Yes. Because again, if we are uh, allowing recursion, but don't allow if and while, the question is why? Why not just do the same thing for if and while? So well, let's be consistent a little bit. Uh, so compiler uh, error, right? So this is going to be compiler error. And we're going to say something. So we need to know the location. Where are we currently? So this is going to be token lock uh, error. Oh, well, I don't have to do that in here. Um, recursion, uh, no recursion in inline uh, procedures. Procedures. Uh, and then I suppose I'm going to just exit with the non zero exit code. So this is one of the things we can do. Hmm. I thought this will be the first warning in port. No, no warnings. No recursion in line procedures. Okay. So, but then we can do something like this and it is allowed. And if we do something like this, it is fine. Uh, but if we remove this entire thing, it is fine. But no recursion is allowed in here. Okay, Th that's fine for now, I guess. That's fine for now. Though, again, if we're going to introduce the mutual recursion, this is going to bite me in the ass if I forget about that, right? So just in case, I'm going to put it to do um, somewhere. Mm, uh, to, 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 to. In line recursion prevention mechanism does not uh, detect mutual recursion, which is fine for now, because we do not even support mutual recursion uh, but when we do this might bite us in the ass so if this happens so what we're gonna do if this happens i don't know because i i feel like even if i put a to do in here this still will bite me in the ass. Which it will, I'm 100% sure. <laughs> so this to do is kind of pointless. But let's, uh, let's keep it in here just in case. Anyway. So, such is the reality of software development, right? You're supposed to suffer. You are supposed to suffer. Alrighty, so that's gonna be the fix, I suppose. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, go. so it's gonna be ports.py. Let's uh, compile ports.port and then recompile ports.port yet again. <laughs> okay. Mm. Port dot pi do not allow recursion uh, in inline procedures. Procedures. There we go. Uh, also, I think I need to do a port port. Um, so, because we have like, we still have those bugs in the port port implementation. Uh, Inlining does not work with um, 
Recursive inline procedures. Okay, so I'll have to put these to do's uh, in here somewhere. Uh, so inlining does not work with this thing. Inlining breaks type checking for uh, type checking all the procedures. Right. Uh, why are you asking questions to me? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Right, I'm gonna push that right into the repo. Cool. Very, very cool. 